Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2008, and as the 5131 made through early 2019, the now discontinued uh, Patek Philippe 5131G-010 travel time. And as you can see, this example in white gold, 5131G with the white gold case, the frosted silver white hands, and a cloisonné enamel dial with world time complication, bigger than the 5231 that succeeded at this case with crown guards, 39.5 millimeters. If you measure the guards, it's over 40, so it has a lot of presence considerably more than its successor. It reads as a larger watch. In terms of thickness, 10.8 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It's fairly broad for a Patek dress watch at 49.7 millimeters, and then there's a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So it has a fairly broad and contemporary stance on the wrist. As you can see, large for a Patek dress watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it has an impressive footing spreading across my wrist. You can see there's a little bit of clearance left on both sides, not too much of an issue there, but I would probably say that this watch is suitable for a wrist of uh, 14 and a half centimeters circumference or larger, though you'll have no trouble fitting it underneath the cuff. As you can see, it has a domed bezel, no problems there. Taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, as I like to say, navy blue, semi-gloss, large rectangular scale alligator leather on top, monotone stitch, sheer cut side showing the layers of leather. You can see this is a Patek Philippe factory strap in brand new condition pull tab bars for removing the strap without tools. You can use your fingernail and remove the strap. And then we have a Calatrava cross on the buckle of a single fold deployment clasp made of matching white gold. And of course, Patek Philippe, since at least 2006, has used what's called gray gold in the industry. It's 18 karat white alloy that never needs to be rhodium plated. Regular white gold needs to be plated. This never does. And if it's scratched, it's the same color underneath. You can't scratch through to a different color. The case is substantial. It doesn't have the stepped lugs of its successor model. It has blended lugs. They create a more voluminous look to the case. You can see the lugs are gently tapered and it does wrap nicely around the periphery of your wrist. The bezel is dramatically domed, and you can see it actually segues into the curvature of the case flank, so there's a nice design continuity there. The pusher adjuster for the world time system is rounded off on all facets. You have a crown guard structure that adds a little bit of visual substance to the watch. It does look larger as a result, flanking a Calatrava cross on a sharply knurled crown. Everything's of high polish. You can see Patek had the good taste to keep the dial relatively pure, putting the company name and the city of origin at 12 and 6 o'clock respectively. Let's take a quick look at the dial and just clarify how this works. So you put your city of reference at 12 o'clock and what happens is the city of reference is the time where you are now. It's the time referenced at center. What you do is you look at the hour adjacent to any of the other 24 cities, so 24 principal time zones, 24 reference cities, and if I want to know what time it is, for example, in Sydney, the minutes I read at center, the hour I read adjacent to Sydney, and you can see uh, right there it is 10 in the morning in Sydney. It is 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Midway Island. It is 6 o'clock in the evening in Mexico City, and if I want to change my city of reference and I want to put a new city up there, such as I want to fly and visit my friend Vlad in Moscow. Well, now you can see that it does all the math for you and it tells you the time. And if you want, to, if you want, you can read the time in a sort of digital format by reading it on the 24-hour reference ring, which moves counterclockwise as the watch operates. So you can read it as four on the nose if you wish. You can see one half of the reference ring is dark, one half is light, distinguishing between night and day in these disparate time zones. The timepiece, of course, using the system developed by Louis Cotier and Patek Philippe in tandem, particularly the jumper system, that was developed during the 1950s to help the watch do all of the travel math for you. Now let's get the hands out of the way as best I can and appreciate the cloisonné enamel dial. So you have vitreous enamel on a solid gold base that forms the base of the dial. You then put this glass-based paint on top of it and it gets fired dozens of times at up to 800 degrees centigrade and the color 
changes depending on what paint you use, but the darkness of the color changes based on the thickness of the paint applied. And then you have the cloison, or the little wires of solid gold that are used to create the land masses themselves. So these are all handcrafted. This watch was in its day an application piece. You would have to apply and be approved to receive it and then wait perhaps up to a year for it to be made for you. Turning it over, you can see it features caliber 240HU or Universel. It is the Universal Time watch. This is a caliber 240 base. 240 came out in 1977 and it's been used as Patek's upscale automatic versus the center rotor ever since. Now you can see it's free sprung with a Gyromax style architecture adjusted in a high horology standard five positions. It beats way at 21,600 vibrations per hour and it has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. You have by automatic winding via micro rotor a 48 hour power reserve. All of this water resistant down to 30 meters and it is handsomely decorated with all the standards you would expect of high horology the bevels the engine turning the coat de genève the satination of the wheels the black polishing of the screws all of that is present and correct reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details